Hey everybody, Donnie B. Learn Pro Recording, you know, the site that not only shows you how to do the recording, but how to get paid for it. Hey, today I'm in my Studio B. Uh, we are at uh, ES Audio Recording Studios in Los Angeles, California, and I want to talk to you about this console behind me. This is an Allen & Heath GS3000 recording console, uh, the black print edition from 1995. Uh, I tried to find a little information about this thing on the internet this week. I couldn't find anything. I could. I found one YouTube video from eight years ago, and it was in German, so it wasn't helpful uh, for me. It wasn't helpful at all. I want to. I'm going to run down some stuff with this console with you. Show you why I like it. Show you the signal flow and what what I think makes this console extra special and extra rare. But of course, I've got something free for you. I want to go grab my uh, Studio Growth Formula. This is something that's going to help you build, grow, and scale your studio into hopefully you know, sustaining your income and hashtag quit your day job. So let's get going. Let's talk about this console right after the intro. Here we go. Bobby, run the intro. I don't know who Bobby is. Did you guys hire a new guy? Who's Bobby? You guys know Bobby? Nobody, nobody knows Bobby? I don't know. Run the intro, Bobby. Bobby. I don't know who Bobby is, bro. I really don't. I, I'm just going to run the intro. So here you go. Okay, guys, look, here is the Wikipedia page for Allen and Heath. Okay. Um, the company was, the company was founded in 1969. It's a, uh, it's a British company, man. They're from, uh, from, uh, Cornwall, England. Uh, you know, one of the first British consoles, and, and, and you know, they were right there with Neve and, and SSL and all those guys, man. Um, in the 70s, uh, they built a, a, the, actually the, the console that was used on Pink Flo for Pink Floyd with uh, Alan Parsons. He used the, uh, the Mod 1. Uh, that's their uh, the Alan and Heath console that was actually in the movie. Um, actually in the movie Live in Pompeii with uh, 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 Pink Floyd. Uh, Alan Heath was sold to Harman International. Harman International, as we all know, is um, that's basically JBL, man. And uh, you know, and then um, later on, it got sold to D&M Holdings, apparently, uh, in 2008. You know, that's that's kind of the history of of where they started and where they start. You know, how they became. But um, you know, moving on to the next page. This is uh, the GS3000 overview of the features. Um, it came in uh, 24 and 32 bit frames. Um, it's a, it's an inline console. So there's a dual, uh, it's a twin fader dual path input is what they call it. It's basically an inline console as opposed to a split console. If you guys, there's some great videos on YouTube about that. If you guys want to go see the difference between an inline and a uh, split console, split consoles were way back in the day. Inline consoles, you could get a lot more in a smaller footprint. And, um, it, it became a, it became a big thing in the seventies, the inline consoles, especially with Neves and SSLs and, um, things like that. There are two patchable valve preamps, um, but you can also take your master fader and run it through the valves, which is basically a tube. And you can overdrive the tube and add a little extra saturation, a little bit, you know, and it's good distortion, man. It's like you can crunch things a little bit. I frequently take guitar and run it through that valve, man, just to, just to give it a little, you know, this is, look, this is after we've recorded the guitar and it's, say the guitar in my mix is too clean. I can route it through my, um, I can route it through the valve and add a little bit of dirt to it. You know what I mean? It does, this console does have MIDI automation on it. I can set up mute groups. And if I'm in a mix situation on the console, I can set up a mute group and uh, I can, gr you know, I can group all my drums and like mute all my drums and just listen to everything else or whatever. But it also has a transport on the, on the, right on the console, which comes in really handy. Um, I get, you know, when I'm mixing in the, in the analog world, I can get my keyboard, and my mouse out of the way. Uh, and just use the console, man. And, and you know, it's got the fast forward, rewind, uh, play and stop and all that stuff on there. So it's got and one of my biggest complaints about this console is it's only got two studio playbacks. Uh, basically, only it's only got two outputs for two sets of monitors. Uh, you know, it's got a main monitor and, a, and an alt monitor. Um, it does have two studio playback feeds. So I use one to send to the headphones for the for the artist. And then I've also got speakers actually in the studio room, and I can play back from in there. So um, that's that's just some of the quick features on that. Here's the brochure. Um, I don't. I kind of don't understand this. It says when you're mixing with professionals. Okay, what uh, this 
picture doesn't really show me um, mixing with professionals. But, you know, um, other than that, that's all they say is when you're mixing with professionals, they let, kind of leave it open, don't they? Just <laughs> you can finish that sentence if you want. So it's an 8-bus inline recording console. Um, is the, you know, the 8-bus came in 24 and 32. So basically you get 52 and 68 on the mix. Um, Wide-ranging high-performance mic preamps. I actually like the mic preamps on this thing, man. They don't sound bad. They sound really good. On, I've used them on guitars. Actually, we've run drums through there. This, uh, the control, the, the, the live room in the studio is really too small for... It's really kind of small for drums. We can put drums in there, but we we here at ES Audio have a much better drum room in the in our studio A, our larger studio. Uh, if you guys want, you I put them. I did put the link there. You guys can go check out the studio. Studio uh, Studio A is our larger studio. Studio B is the cons where this console is actually located. Um, in Studio A, we have a an Audient forty eight sixteen, which is uh, uh, also a, you know it's a sixteen bus. This actually is an eight bus. Um, that, you know, that's just these buses right here are, there's only eight of them, but these, I use them as subgroups. I don't use them as buses. Um, I, I don't, we don't really record too much in here. Uh, when I do, it's just one or two at a time. And I usually use the, I usually use my Apollos for the preamps and stuff in here because I do use these preamps on this console. They do sound great. Um, we, we keep one plugged in all the time for, uh, uh, our talkback mic. We keep our talkback mic on all the time, and uh, we use that Mutomatic plug-in to, to mute between takes and things like that. But um, this is basically showing you one of the channels, and this is actually the channel here. Uh, the EQ is great, man. You can split the EQ between the two uh, between the two faders if you need to, or you can use it in, you know, if you're mixing, you just use it on the monitor or the channel or wherever you're mixing at. Um, it's got basically six auxiliary sends. Two of them can be pre or post. The other two or the other four are strictly post. This is the channel fader, which sends to the recording device. This is the monitor fader, of course, which comes back from that, that recording device. You can also flip these if you need to. Um, uh, the way that we use it is we use uh, each each uh, channel is uh, directly, directly fed into the Apollos. So each, like channel one is, is input one into the Apollo. Channel two is input two into the, the Apollo. The, we use the direct outs on each one of these channels. Um, dude, the EQ is really well done. I mean, the EQ reminds me of, of Neve a lot, where it sweeps and where it breaks. And, and if you guys know about the, the high frequency, low frequency on the uh, SSL 4K black, you know, the, the, the 4K had the black and brown switch, and you could switch between two different kind of low frequency uh, uh, boosting cuts. And this one has the same thing. It's pretty dope. Um, it, this doesn't cost what an SSL cost. And, um, it is, um, I think when it was new, it was like 12,000 bucks, but 12,000 bucks in 1995 money is a little bit more than that in today's money. So, um, you know, so I don't know, maybe it was 20, uh, you know, uh, we can look up the, you can look up the, you know, what $12,000 was worth in 1995 in today's money, but it was probably, you know. Twelve grand back then wasn't that wasn't that, it wasn't that much money, you know, for the, for this dude for the console. I mean, the console sounds great, it feels great, it looks awesome. It's really impressive when the clients come in. That's a big thing, man, is being really impressive when the clients come in and see this big console in the in the room, and they're like, oh, that's why this studio costs more than the guy down the street, you know. So um, that's another thing too. Plus, I really like analog. I just think I, I feel analog just feels better. You know, for me, it just, I like it better. It I actually, I come from the live mixing world. So, you know, uh, front of house mixing live stuff. So back in the day, I, mean, I was touching faders, you know, and, and, and pan knobs and everything all day. So um, this does have a great meter on it. I, I wish it had more of the, the VUs, but it does have a VU out for the master out, uh, left and right out. Uh, the others are, uh, you know, um, LED. So not bad. But here's that MIDI stuff on the for the, the MIDI machine control, and uh, you can set up your mute groups. You can actually make, um, you can actually make, uh, it sets the records. The way that I set up my Pro Tools is that I can record on the console via MIDI, and it also records the channel in Pro Tools. I, I set that up via the, the MIDI machine control in, in, in Pro Tools. Um, when I'm working in Logic, it's a little different. There's some schematics. Um, the two specifications, of course, this is just the brochure. So of course they're trying to sell it to you and they're making it look really good. Um, this is the rear panel and you know, uh, 
this is where you uh, mount the meter bridge. The meter bridge comes with it, but it, it's not, you know, it, it, it screws down. It's, on, it's not part of it. you got to plug in the ribbon, the ribbon cables. Um, this is the front panel layout of the center section and one of the channels. So all 32 channels are exactly the same. So really, you only need to know one. Um, look, my students come in here, man. Uh, students come in for their, you know, uh, in-person learning, and they, they see the console. They get very intimidated because there's a lot of knobs and buttons and switches and, and things on it. But honestly, guys, if you, uh, if you break this thing down and you understand this one, you understand all the other 31 of them because they're exactly the same. The uh, center section here is a little bit different, but once you understand signal flow, guys, I keep telling you that signal flow is the key. Signal flow is the key to this whole kingdom. If you understand signal flow, you understand what this is. Even if you look at the schematics, the schematics are down here. Even if you look at these schematics, you can find this signal flow. This is the block diagram. So you got your input, then it goes through the switch, it goes through the thing, goes through the EQ, goes through... You can follow this down and find out where it goes. If you just understand simple, simple signal flow, audio coming from this place and going to this place. This is a great little, um, uh, you know, a graphic showing you how you would, how you might set this up for multi-track recording. And then the, the other one's how you might set it up for mix down. This thing's pretty cool. The console's pretty cool. You actually have three different two-track outputs. You could go to your DAT machine. You could go to your CD recorder. You can maybe send it back into Pro Tools through 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 an input and record it back into Pro Tools on a, on a stereo track, whatever, what have you. So, hey, listen, look, I just kind of wanted to run this down to you and show you this console and show you some cool stuff about it. Um, I really do like this console. I enjoy it. There is a patch bay in this in this room, and it is um, it's not that hard to understand a patch bay. Actually, again, once you understand signal flow you can probably figure it out. if you, As long as you understand and know the signal flow, know that your signal is coming from point A and going to point B, you can figure it out. It's very simple. You just got to not get overwhelmed and break it down into its simplistic form and follow it. And that's how we do it. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for hanging out with me today. We will see you Wednesday on the blog post. My name is Donnie B. I am out. Have a great week, guys. Talk soon. Okay, everybody. Here we are actually in the studio. This is actually Studio B. This is the actual console. I know we've just looked at some brochures and the manual and things like that, uh, explaining the, 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 you know, the signal paths and all that stuff. But this is actually the console. There's the patch bay. There's the SSL uh, 500 series pre-EQ and dynamics. I've got NS10s in here. There's also some Dyna, Dyna Audio acoustics. Um, you know, uh, this is the actual recording console. Uh, pardon the, uh, the the handheld camera movements. Uh, that's what we do around here, you know what I mean? So there's the GS3000. I've seen a lot of GL3000 and GL3300s on uh, YouTube and on, uh, you know, for sale on, on like Reverb.com and things like that. I can't really find any of these. I can't really find out any information about these. So, you know, we talked about the signal path and everything. I just want to kind of run it down and show it to you real quick. In real life, there we go. We only use, um, we actually only use eight of these preamps in here. I've got, there's an Apollo on this side. I've got the 8P and then I've got two 16s. So that gives me 32 plus the eight. You know, uh, uh, I've got eight inputs and 40 outputs on this thing. So this thing's pretty cool. I get to, I love to mix on the console. Basically, I take all the outputs from the, D the DAW and run it out to these channels. I, you know, and there's so many routing possibilities. This is the coolest part about this console are these two um, tube drivers right here, man. I can run, I can patch these two tubes into the master bus and just drive the tubes. Uh, you can overdrive them pretty cool. They're not stock tubes. They're, they're uh, 12 AX7s, I believe. Um, they were, uh, the, the one thing when I bought this console, those tubes were, were burned up. So we had to actually go in there and replace those tubes. But other than that, man, this console was in great shape when I got it. This is the black face printing of this console. They, they had another one that was kind of like a beige like kind of thing. Um, but uh, this is actually, the, if I'm, if, you know, I may be wrong, but I'm pretty sure this is the last fully analog console from Allen and Heath and it's it, it's really nice I mean it, it you know there, there are some mods to this thing there's a guy in Nashville I think doing mods to this thing that I may get mine done I'm not sure I really like this 
Um, there's a ton of cool features on here. I really enjoy the sound of the analog when I mix on this. And uh, I don't know, it just feels really good. And if you guys have any questions, comments, or concerns, please reach out, let me know, ask away. Please, that's why I'm here. If you guys need any uh, assistance in like uh, putting together a patch bay, if you're gonna be putting together a patch bay, if you wanna know about how patch bays work, I think I've got a video out there. I'll do another one, if not, on uh, how to configure your patch bay and how to figure out how to build it and all that kind of stuff, all that kind of cool stuff. Anyway, in case you guys are also interested, this is the podcast. This is how I do all these videos and everything. This is actually the, the content creation station. And uh, you can see I'm actually, the camera's actually moving and it's actually recording in real time. Um, there's a Rodecaster Pro, there's a laptop, a Mac laptop. Uh, the, the software I'm using right now is Ecamm Live. That's kind of what it looks like. I'm gonna do a whole nother, a whole nother setup so I can show you guys my setup and all that. The lights I use uh, for these are those Elgato uh, uh, key lights. I've got a shotgun mic there. I believe that's a Sennheiser 416. The camera that I keep on this rig is uh, uh, the, G, the G7, the Lumix G7. The camera that I'm looking at right here is the, that you're looking through right here is the Lumix GH5, in case you guys care. I'm gonna run a whole, I'm gonna, maybe next week, man, I'm gonna do a whole thing about my podcast rig and how I have it set up. We use it for clients as well as all this content creation that you guys get on a daily. Uh, I also make, you know, also create courses for other schools. I create courses for myself and other schools. I, uh, I have tons of content out there that I give away and that I also sell. We have a membership program, which we'll talk about in another episode. But I really wanted to, in, you know, show you guys this, this console. I'm really... I really like this console. I like how it feels. I like how it sounds. I love, I love the feel of it. I just, I love analog and I like how it, I just like, it, it just feels better. Yeah, we work in Pro Tools. Yes, we work in Logic, but there's nothing like being on an analog console when you want to feel things and push things and you can push things hard and you can, you can actually feel how, how it reacts and how it enacts and reacts to the, to the signals that you put through it. It's pretty cool. I'm having a great time with it. If you guys have any questions, please leave those in the comments below. More than happy to help you out with, uh, with anything you need. So I'm going to get up out of here. Enjoy the console. Man, if you guys ever find one of these for sale in your, in your, in your you know, local area, I, I, I might suggest grabbing one because they're not that expensive. You know, I've seen them go for less than 2000 bucks. So, you know, and they're, they're just a great sounding, great feeling console. The preamps are awesome. Everything about it is, is pretty cool. I think you'll dig it. But anyway, if you got any questions, like I said, questions, comments, and concerns, reach out. Uh, info at learnprorecording.com. My name is Donnie B, and I am out of here. Peace. Have a great week, guys.